Is our online campus with us already? All right, let's greet our online campus. Give them a round of applause. We love you guys. Thank you so much for joining with us. Thank you for tuning in. There is victory in Jesus even in 2021. Even in the first week with all that's happened, come on, I still find my peace in Jesus, my hope in Jesus, love in Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage you with that as we sang that song about speaking Jesus, that when, when things come into us that kind of catch our breath, kind of pull the wind out of the room, kind of catch us off guard, that we just don't run and let fear have its way, but we speak. We take control over that situation and we cast it down in Jesus' name and say, this might be a fact, come on, but I got the truth of Jesus in my life and it has peace and precedence over every other situation that comes in, amen? I got a, a text last night and it just comes in and you know sometimes fear can even come in a form of a Christian prayer request a need arise oh this just happened and 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 I'm just trying to make you aware and it, it's a, a Christian thing to do but fear tries to even sneak its way into that but we can take captive that thing in Jesus name and say we will not fear amen God is in control he holds my yesterday my today and by tomorrow he is in control love it um, let's just uh, let's. Just, I'll ask you to stand up real quick one more time, and we're going to do our church mission statement. And at the end of that, we can release the kids to NB Kids class and do something a little bit different. One of the teachers or helpers will be in the back of the sanctuary, so you don't actually have to bring your child over. They'll wait for the class and walk over together. Amen. All right. So in 2020, come on, we will be the church where people encounter the love of God, where they learn to live out God's purpose and plan for their life so they can lead others to him. Come on, love, live, lead. We will love like no other. Live with intention and lead by example. Why? Because we believe he makes. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you can be seated. We'll dismiss the kids, the NB Kids class this morning. Amen. Well, so good to have you in the place this morning. So good to see you. You made it through the first week of 2021. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody said that the worst days you lived through every bad day of 2020. Your worst days you survived it. You lived through it. And we're excited about what God is doing as we prepare for 2021 and go into this. Um, I want to read our opening text this morning. If you want to turn to Matthew chapter 6. And I think for the first time, all of my verses are in one book, Matthew and mainly in chapter 6. So if you want to open your Bible, just leave it there. We're going to refer a little bit to 4 and 5, but I'm going to stay in Matthew chapter 6. We're going to open up the second Sunday of 2021, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Let's read this together. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, I thank you for your word today, God, and for what you've already done, God, and doing, Lord Jesus, in our midst, God. Lord, we pray for the the Sunday school classes going on next door and the nursery, Lord, that you write your word from the youngest heart, God, Lord, to the oldest heart in the sanctuary, God. I thank you that your word is alive, fresh, new, God. Lord, and just ask you to have your way, speak your word, touch every life in Jesus' name. Come on, the church said. Amen. So seek first the kingdom of God. So we're taking the first part of this year, and we're going to do just that. So we're launching a brand new series, a three-week series, that um, I'm titled Refocus. Refocus 2021. See, they said uh, 2020, everybody said it. We've all heard it. The year of vision, 2020 vision. Well, I think some of us got a vision a little blurry in 2020, and some dirt got thrown in our eyes or something. But we are going to refocus at the beginning of 2021. Refocus 2021. So it's a teaching on what we're going to be doing for the next three weeks of prayer and fasting. Everybody say, woohoo! Amen. <laughs> prayer and fasting. So we're going to follow along in our prayer guides uh, during the 21 days of fasting and uh, to really to refocus our lives and our heart and align our heart with the heart of the Father. Amen? So we're going to begin this year off with intentional. I love that we said love, live, lead, live with intention. Not by accident. We're going to live with intention. So we're going to intentionally start out the year with 21 days, prayer and fasting, set aside to the Lord to realign, refocus our heart with the heart of the Father. Somebody said that uh, prayer is one of the most discussed and taught topics in the church, 
but also one of the least practiced. Prayer is one of the most discussed and taught topics in the church, but also one of the least practiced. Fasting, on the other hand, let's be honest, we don't even want to discuss it. We don't even want to talk about it. And if we do talk about it, it's more of education than application. One of my friends said it a while ago. So we've in the church, especially the Pentecostal church, we've had inspiration. We've even had perspiration. We've had revelation. But what we need is application. See, some churches will teach you how to jump and dance and fall on Sunday, but not how to walk on Monday. That's all great and grand, and I love the excitement of Sunday morning celebration, but I need a faith and a walk that gets me through Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back in the house on Sunday. Better than I was the week before, not just coming back to say, oh God, I barely made it through. But we are supposed to, we are called not just to survive, but to thrive. Amen? To be the light in the darkness, to shine, to lead others to Him. It's not just about me and mine, but it's how, who'd you encourage this week? Who'd you talk to this week? That's why I love gathering together and encouraging others and those joining online. Your simple text in the chat encourages somebody else that's online and reading that. Encourages me later when I listen to the service or watch the service and, and see people chiming in online. We need to encourage one another. And especially through these next three weeks of prayer and fasting that we encourage one another and text one another, call one another, and uh, run to Jesus together. Amen. And seek him on these first weeks of the year. So we're being in, in Matthew chapter 6. This is Jesus speaking. If you've got a red letter Bible, this, all these few chapters are red letter edition. Last year we did a sermon series on red letters. I love that. The red letters in the Bible. Jesus speaks. Some now are blue letters. I'm not sure why that changed. But uh, either way, we know the whole Bible is inspired by God. It is all his word. But I love those red letters. And uh, Jesus speaking here in Matthew chapter 6. Earlier, see, we read this in verse 33, talking about to, to, to seek first his kingdom. But early in the chapters, he had some win yous. Does everybody know what a win you is? A win you. See, Jesus had some win yous that he threw into the beginning of this chapter. And some of us maybe wish he wouldn't have said it. Maybe we wish we wouldn't, he wouldn't have put it in there. But it's in there. We can't do nothing about it. So these win yous. See, a win you is not a suggestion. It's not a question. It's not an I'd like you to if you find the time, if you get around to it. It's not an ask. It's a command. It's a statement. See, when your boss says, when you do such and such, when you, whatever task it is in your employment, when you finish this task, come see me. Was he asking me if I would like to do that task? No, he was telling me. If you like your paycheck, you need to do this and do it well. When you, see, these are the when you. As a parent, as a parent, if we were to say, um, when you clean your room, make sure you run the vacuum. Was I asking my child to if he feels like cleaning the room or, or running the vacuum, no. It was a command. It was a statement of fact that when I come back, this room better be clean and you better have swept it. It was a win you. Win you. We have win yous in the Bible. Everybody say win you. <laughs> so with that in mind, let's read a little bit of Matthew chapter 6. This is setting up the series and setting up these next three weeks. So verse 2, when you give, when you give. Verse 2, we're going to read verse 2 through verse 4. And I'm reading out of the NIV this morning. It'll be up on the screen. It says, so when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets. This is Jesus speaking, guys. This is Jesus speaking to a multitude, to a, a lot of people. Jesus talking to be honored by them. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees in secret what is done will reward you. Somebody say, when you give. All right, we're going to the next when you, verse 5. We're going to read from verse 5 to 6. When you pray, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5 and 6. And when you pray, 
Do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. Verse 6, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. All right, one more when you Verse 16 through 18, when you fast. Verse 16 through 18, when you fast. Jesus speaking, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that you will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Somebody say, when you pray, when you give, when you fast. See, are these suggestions? Man, Jesus laying it down right here. Are you picking up what he's laying down? Are you feeling the Lord, what he's saying right now? When you give, it's not a suggestion. So we're just going to hit some topics right off the beginning of the year and get them over and done with. And we're going to talk about tithing. No, relax. We're sticking on prayer and fasting. But these are things Jesus touches on and tells us. When you give, not if, not maybe, not when you have abundance, not when all things are going great, not when the government just gave you $600 more or whatever amount comes in, but when you give, regardless of everything else, when you pray, when you fast, when you fast. I love what Jesus says. I love, I love how he just kind of lays it out there about the, what the hypocrites do. Man, some people in that room probably did some of the things that he was saying. Some people that were standing in the audience like, what are you talking about? That's the way I do it. You're calling me a hypocrite? I fast more than everybody around here. See, it's not so much the action we need to be caught up in. It's the heart. It's the heart behind the action. What is our motive? What is our heart? Is just to say, well, I fasted this many days. Man, let these words stick with you these next three weeks so we don't use fasting as a justification to be short with people, be angry with people. I didn't have my whatever today. But do like Jesus said. Wash your face. Put some cologne on. Put some lipstick on if you're a girl, all right? Uh, you know? Put some makeup on. Our president of our Bible school a long time ago, when they asked him about makeup on women, he said, if the barn needs painted, paint it. And uh, it's an old time way of looking at it. He said, I'm not getting caught up with that stuff. And uh, I loved it. I've always remembered that. Um, but yeah, I like what he said, put oil on your head. Dude, put some gel in. Put some hairspray. Make your stuff look good. Not, we're not glorifying that we're fasting. We're glorifying God that's getting us through this fast. Amen? People, we should have to explain people later that that's what we were did. That, oh, you're fasting, aren't you? Because you're grumpy, you know? And uh, I know sometimes that's why men sometimes go away, go to a cabin, go to a hotel room and fast and seek the Lord because they'd be short with everyone around them. So we need to watch our attitude throughout this time. When you pray, when you fast. Come on, it's not an option for a believer. It's praying uh, maybe just for monks that live up in the mountains somewhere. Something they do when they're not practicing their karate or something. Or carrying whatever. No, it's not just for monks. It's not just for the Pope. It's not just for priests. It's not just for some elite religious leaders. It's for the believer. It's for the follower of Christ. It's for all of us in this room that we pray and we fast. Somebody say, well, who is Jesus talking to in Matthew chapter 6? Well, the sermon begins, really, this is like a three-chapter sermon. It, it begins in, verse, in chapter 5, but it sets up in chapter 4. So if you want to turn back into chapter 4 of the book of Matthew, what a great name, huh? Matthew. You know, it means gift of God, Matthew. That happens to be my name, Matthew. Anyways, um, Matthew chapter 4, verse 23 through 25. It says, and Jesus, now I'm reading out of the New King James, and Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. 
Verse 24, then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. Verse 25, great multitudes followed him from Galilee, from Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and beyond the Jordan. We're going to continue reading in chapter 5, verse 1 and 2. And seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain. And when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying. And it goes on. And we read some of the greatest words that have ever been spoken followed and and learned by people of all religions and non-religious study the words that came from Jesus, this Sermon on the Mount, these Beatitudes that come from this. And it ends in chapter 7, verse 28 and 29. I want to read that. It says, And so it was when Jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. I thank God that this is not just a history book. (laughs) See, the scribes taught it as history. He taught it as this is what God is doing, not what God has just done. We we said it before, and I'll, I'll say it again and keep saying it. We read about the characters of the Bible to reveal the character of the God of the Bible, that he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. That's in the New Testament, people. Come on, he's the same God that brought Israel out, kept them in the wilderness, and brought them into the promised land. If he can deliver the nation of Israel, my God, I think he's all right with U.S. of A. and every other nation on this planet. He's got them in his hand. He's in control. He's in control. I want to encourage you, church, that no matter what 2021 holds, we know who holds 2021. He is king of all kings, Lord of all lords. He's in control. He's in control. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. And be those who spread encouragement. Amen. Jesus was teaching his disciples, but not just the 12. It says, and all those that came from all far off, all those followers, all the curious, all the ones that have thought they were devoted to him, all those skeptical, Jesus taught them all. Children and elderly alike, religious and non-religious, fishermen, carpenters, tax collectors, doesn't matter where they came from. If they would listen, he spoke. If they were near, he shared. This is our Jesus. And his his teachings are not just for a select few, but they're for the whosoever. Amen? To all that will listen, both then and now, his words are alive today. Simply put, we fast because Jesus said to. (laughs) I don't need to read another book about fasting or all the benefits of it and all the reasons. Here's enough for me. Jesus said to. That settles it. Well, did it die with this time period, and is it over, and, you know, if, if, is it going to hurt you? Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> but not spiritually, not spiritually. Fasting disconnects us from the world and connects us to God. Some of these things, I'm going to just go through a couple ideas on fasting here, and we've had some great fasting in the past, and like I said, this is just a quick introduction A quick brief explanation of fasting and some thoughts on it. It disconnects us from the world and connects us to God. Well, how many how many want to be disconnected from a few things going on in the world right now? And want to be connected to the Father. Amen. To hear his voice, be connected to his heart, to see like he sees, and to be moved with compassion. I need that in my life. I know you want it in your life. That's why you're here today. That's why you're tuning in online. We need to be like Jesus. To be like him. That's why we encourage times during the 21 days of fasting that you would lay something down like Netflix or TV altogether or social media or whatever your go-to is. I like to talk about go-tos. I got go-tos in my life. And you're frustrated and something happens or something's a little overwhelming. What is your go-to? We asked this one time in a Bible study one time, and I'm kind of asked the room, and we were around, what's your go-to? And, and somebody said the textbook uh, Christian answer, like, well, I pray. Well, God bless you and your halo and angel wings because I run to the fridge, dude, and I just grab, like, a nice snack, and it just gives me some peace. You know, what's your go-to? What is your go-to? What, what are those things you run to? 
Some people love to exercise. I just need to work out. I just need to run it out of me, get some frustration out. Whatever it is, what are those go-tos? Jesus wants to be your go-to. And through fasting and prayer and a time intentionally set aside, we remind ourselves and we take authority and we take discipline and we say, he is my go-to. He carries me, he keeps me, he calls me, he leads me, he guides me, he delivers me from all that junk. Jesus, you are. Your word, your time, your presence is my go-to. My go-to. So much else I could say on go-tos. I'm just going to leave it there. That'll be another sermon for another day. But it's funny how they say uh, you got to get connected. That's why we need all the apps in our phone, and we need to keep it with us at all times, and we, we need we need a watch that connects to our phone. So when our phone's distant, we still we stay connected at all times. It's funny how the world even says that getting connected, and and when you take away some of those things, what well, they call it being unplugged being disconnected, and that's what prayer and fasting does. It disconnects us from everything else and connects us to the Father, connects us to heaven. Fasting st stresses the dependency on God, not on the things of earth. Fasting stresses the dependency on God and not on the things of earth. It declares that he is our nourishment and our strength. <laughs> not your cup of coffee. Come on, he can wake you up in the morning. His word can bring you through. And some people are like, just leave that alone. <laughs> that's, not a, that's not a solid food. I can drink that. It comes from a bean, right? I tried convincing my wife that about chocolate. I'm like, didn't chocolate grows from the ground? It's like cocoa. She's like, all right, I'll give you a scoop full of just straight up cocoa, whatever it's called, and see how you like it. Uh, sugar comes from like cane, like ground. I was trying to justify a lot of snacks, things, what, what we can eat for the next three weeks. Um, different times but again this I want this is between you and God we're saying 21 days this is the season that we are setting aside for prayer and fasting I am not telling you to fast for 21 days this is between you and God whether you want to do every Tuesday every Monday just lunch on these days just dinner just till noon just after sunset there's all kinds of different things that you can do to specify you know, you take in consideration your medical conditions, medicines, all that kind of stuff. You set something aside. I want you to get something down today. It starts Monday morning. Something to take today or this week or this period or just during the weekdays. I'm going to do this and weeknights, whatever. Do something to set these this time period aside special to God. And when you were supposed to be doing that thing, that's when you come into the word. This is not starve and sleep. <laughs> Uh, I've liked to, to do that before. Starve and sleep. Call it fasting and prayer. It's not. <laughs> you, you put that thing down and you pick up this. You put down the quarter pounder with cheese and you pick this up. You put down that, that other thing, whether it be TV watching or, or checking Facebook or, or this, and you, you, you pick up his presence. You go to your knees and you seek God and you ask him to come into your life, to hear his voice, to know him. We're going to talk about this coming up here in just a little bit more. So, isn't it funny how if you go into surgery, a planned, scheduled surgery, what is one of the things they ask you to do usually? Thank you for not saying some of the other things, because that just wouldn't be appropriate in church. But yes, you got the right answer. Fasting. That's what, that's what they ask you to do before you go into surgery. How many want God to do a work on your heart, work on your life? In 2021, in, in, in your own personal life, I want God to do a work. It's funny how we do the same thing with fasting. I want God to do surgery. I want there to be a cutting away from the things in the past. And maybe some things in my present I need God to remove. And I've tried on my own, and it just ain't gone away. But maybe we need to take a time and fast. And lay down on God's hospital table and say, God, remove this from me. I can't take it out of my own strength. But you can. With your hand. He is the great physician. Isn't that funny? We call him that, the great physician. Do your work. Let there be a cutting away, a removal, maybe an implant from heaven. Something that God needs to put in our life that hasn't been there before. We need that. Maybe there's hurts, habits, thoughts, addictions, tendencies. We need God. <laughs> Watch the news. We need God. We need God. Take a minute on social media. It ain't a bad season to lay that thing down right now. 
everything going on. You want to get rid of some frustration? Doesn't even take a take God doing surgery. Shut off Facebook for a little while. Shut off Instagram for a little while. Just lay the thing down and just focus on God. All of a sudden, some fear is in your life. All of a sudden, some fear and frustration is leaving. Let God come in. So, that scared me. With uh, all that's going on, we need Jesus to know him and to make him known. I love that the darker it gets, that's all the more reason for the Christian to shine. The darker it gets, the brighter you shine. And it's something that when there's a light in the darkness, it draws you to it. Isn't that amazing? You be in the woods and you see light. Like, what's over there? What's going on over there? What is that? You're camping. You're drawn to that light. We don't run to the darkness as man's natural tendency. We run to the light. Be a light. Be the light in the darkness. The darker it gets, the brighter we will shine. The more reason there is in the world for despair, fear, and worry is all the more reason for the Christian to share the good news. This is what he made you for. This is why you're alive in 2021. So the darker it gets, the more evidence is your Christianity, is your belief, is your convictions. We need to speak up, shine out. Even if nothing changes in the next year, I will. Man, so many times we start, we start another year off, and I hope 2021 is better than 2020 and all that stuff. Well, don't, I am not putting my expectations in government, my hope in, in laws or, or regulations or mask wearing or not mask wearing or something changing or something changes not. I heard another pastor say it this week, and it blessed my heart, and I hope you pick this up, that if nothing else changes this year, I will. Can you say that with me? Come on, if nothing else changes this year, I will. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a clap over the praise. That's all right. Come on, we are the, the ones that take hold of the conversation. We declare what God is doing. If nothing else is going to change for the better, I will. And I'll tell you what, if anything changes for the worse, I'm still changing for the better. My hope, my faith, my trust is built on nothing less, come on, than Jesus' love and righteousness. Come on, he is our solid rock that stands through every storm. Every storm, we can have peace in Jesus. Come on, it may get worse, but I'm going to get stronger. I'm not going to sit here and promise a rose garden, and, and it's going to be great. We used to do those things. You know, he's alive in 95, breakthrough in 92, and what all these things. Ah, it may get worse, but he is always good. He is always better. You know, pain, even pain is better with Jesus. Trouble is better with Jesus. Jesus is in your boat. Why don't you let him do his thing? Come on. We all have that song that we sang, do what you're famous for. God, do what you're famous for. Use us. Shine through us. Let me be a vessel, a, a tool in your hand, oh God. I was witnessing one time down in New Orleans during Mardi Gras, and we had an outreach team, and, and uh, I with us to a guy and, and he wanted to accept the Lord and we were right down the end of uh, uh, Bourbon Street and just on an end and it was a clear path but it was just Bourbon going and it was a crowd, a sea of people and I told him he was happy and smiling he had just accepted the Lord and I said what we just did that crowd, it's like that entire crowd is going to come this way and you're going to go that way I'm not promising you a rose garden I'm not going to promise you that everything is going to be butterflies and skittles and unicorns well, this is real. What you just decided to do was go against that entire crowd. But God can equip you and empower you and give you the grace, the enabling power to go that way and on the way turn some of those that are going the opposite way and bring them with you. That's what we're called to do as Christians. I love it. He is with you. He is with you. He is for you. Amen. So my walk's going to get better. My roots and faith are going to go deeper. We need the power of God. That's what this season is for, refocusing. We need the power of God. Without it, the sermon's just a TED Talk, for those of you who know what that kind of thing is. It's just a motivational speech. It's just good words, encouragement. Without the power of God, this congregation's just a club. Just to make me feel better, I went and did my religious duty. Something I go to on the weekends, a little getaway. Without the power of God, our giveaways and our outreach are just a humanitarian handout, just something nice to do. 
Come on, but with the power and presence of God, we are the church of the living God in 2021. Come on, a community of believers that can actually see lives transformed by the power of Jesus Christ, the living Lord, with the power of God. Come on, that's just the introduction. Amen. This isn't self-help. This is God help. This is God help us. God, come into my life. This is not a diet. We all joke about that. We said in order for you to take part at the end of the, to break the fast at the end, we're going to weigh you today and weigh you, see if you really took part in this fast. I'll tell you what, I questioned some uh, leaders, religious leaders that are, let's just say, not really in shape, but they brag about fasting 40 days and this all the time. It's like, mm, I don't think so. Anyways, uh, there will be evidence in your life. Yeah, a side effect is you might be losing some weight. That's great. Don't gain it all right back. But this is not a diet. This is not a diet. Amen? It's a time to draw closer to God. If you're in the sanctuary and you don't have uh, one of the, can I have my paper? Uh, if you're in the sanctuary and don't have one of these, if you just raise your hand and uh, the mic in the back will, will bring you out one of these. This is our, our 21 days of prayer fasting guide. Does anybody need one of these? Everybody's got them, and our greeters did a fantastic job. Everybody's got them. Um, so if you're joining us online, part of our online campus, and you don't have one of these, obviously, didn't get one at your door this morning. Uh, we're not that good, I guess. But uh, we do have one available for you online. If you would just go to our Facebook account or even on Instagram, there is a link. It'll say nbchurchfairview.org and a little backslash fasting, right? Got it right? Nailed it. All right. So if you just click on that link, it'll take you to our website that is partially built, but this part is all built up and ready for you. And it has a prayer guide and uh, just a lot of information on fasting. And if you're in the sanctuary and you've got one of these, I still want you to go online. And uh, this week, today, uh, right after service, before you leave, we can help you. And uh, we've got more information. This is just a very, very brief topic. And on the back, it has the uh, prayer topics for the next three weeks. It does not have the verses on here, just the prayer topics. But online, there are verses for each day of the week. So if you're not even partake, maybe you're only going to do fast Monday or Tuesday or whatever day. Even if you're not going to fast at all, I want you to still please pray with your church family over these topics. We want to see God move in these areas. Now, some of these are, if you go online to multiple churches, a lot of churches fast at the beginning of the year. A lot of churches did a very similar thing. Some did 10 days. Some did 14 days. Some did 21. Some might be a 40 church fast, 40 day fast church, whatever. But this uh, prayer guide, we got a couple ideas from them, but we really prayed and sought God about what we need in our local body and what we felt God asking us to pray for. So some of them are repeats from other churches. There's general good things to pray, um, but others are specific to our church and what we want to see God move in our church. Amen. So I'm so thankful for those that did the work on this. I really want you to take, take part of that. It's got... Uh, why we fast, types of fast, how to begin your fast, what to expect when fasting. We have scriptures for, for you to read along with every daily prayer topic. And uh, also, I'm really excited about this. Uh, for those of you with a cell phone, how many have a cell phone? How many text or receive texts on their cell phone? All right, so we've got something we're, we're going to do for the first time ever here at MB Church. We're getting tech savvy, even those of you that are fighting against the pricks. Like God said to, to Paul, why do you fight against the pricks? You know, we don't have the internet at home or whatever. We got something for you. If you have texting capability or your phone, we got something for you. So if you go on the, on the website and you start to look at that, a pop-up will appear. It's just this little thing, square box. It just appears out of nowhere. It's amazing. And, uh, and it asks you for your name and your cell phone number. You enter that and hit submit. My wife said, please put your, full, your first and last name. I don't need your middle name. First and last name and your cell phone number and hit submit. And we will help you do that today. I would love for everybody in the room to get help doing that today if you need that so we can all partake in this together. And we are going to send out a text reminder every morning for the next three weeks. I'm going to say by 8 o'clock, you are going to get a text reminder with the prayer topic 
and the verses for the day that you can look up in, in prayer. And these are just a few of those verses. You can enter this into, into your Google uh, Bible study app and uh, just press in Thanksgiving and praise. What verses on Thanksgiving and praise? You just enter that into Google, and it'll give you Bible verses on it. You can read along. But we're giving you two to five verses for each day. And you can read along those and, and help you pray for that day. And I, don't, don't get carried away and try to do them all in one day. You know, I said, somebody said, oh, this is really nice of you to, to make this up for us. Yeah, it's nice that you, you got to benefit this, but I had to do this for myself, okay? Just to be plain and blunt. Like, you want me to pray for 21 days, you need to give me a task for each day. Because I'm forgetting what to pray for after uh, five minutes of the first day. So what else can I pray for? So we're going to take one day and devote. So... I'm trying to stay with my notes here. We'd love for you to do that. Also, we're going to have a Spotify playlist up maybe later today or tomorrow that you can click on. It'll take you to Spotify, and it has some praise and worship songs already there. We want to really get through this and help you, give you the tools to get through this 21 days. Those of you maybe that have never done it before, I'm asking you to join with us. We're going to come alongside each other and, and help with that. So I just want to read through the card real quick on the, the back side. So if you got your card, you can look at it. So the first week, this week, we're going to take Thanksgiving and praise. We're going to take personal revival on Tuesday, the 13th, salvation, the 14th, family salvation, the 15th, children, the 16th, youth, the 17th, marriage and families. The 18th through 24th, addiction and recovery, health, giving, provision, healing and miracles, spiritual growth, unity. And the last week, church leadership, government leadership, volunteer staff here at the church, evangelism, missions, the persecuted church, and the global church. So I was looking through this card yesterday. If you got your card in front of you, you can kind of look through these different, these three categories, really, these, these three weeks. I, I, I didn't spend a whole lot of time putting them in specific categories, categories just kind of prayed about what God would have us pray for and, and set them in three weeks just to break it up. And uh, I really wanted to come up with with names for the sermons this week. So it's going to be a three-part sermon, three-week sermon that we're going to teach on prayer and fasting and, and focus on these three things for each week. And uh, I started to think, well, maybe we could name it, you know, the first one, maybe family, because that's all about, you know, personal salvation and family salvation, children, youth, marriage and families. So that's really family. And then the second one is more about our community, about health, provision, healing, spiritual growth, unity. And then the third one is really more about, like, mission what we're to be about. I thought we could name it that. And then I was thinking, oh, it could be knowing him. And then the next one could be to be like him. And the third one could be make him known or see him, reflect him, show him, kind of coming up with all these different names we could do. And I sat back and I just looked at it. I'm like, you silly. It's love is the first week. It's all about relationships. Our relationship with him and our relationship with others. The second week, it's all about how we live. And isn't it funny, the third week is all about how we lead. Love, live, lead. I love when God knows what he's doing even when I don't. <laughs> it's what he's asked us to do in this church, to love like no other, to live with intention, and to lead by example. Love, live, lead. I like that. I love when God shows me stuff in my own notes that I didn't even know was there. So this week, I'm just going to go through this real quick as we get ready to end. Monday, we're going to start with thanksgiving and praise. Why start with praise? Come on, because I like what TF10, he said, the devil's allergic to praise. It makes him run out of the room when you begin to praise. It makes him step back from your life when you begin to lift his name up above every other situation in your life. So that's why we start with praise and thanksgiving. Uh, thankful to God for all that he's been, all that he's done, and all that he's going to do. Especially this day. But throughout the whole 21 days, I really encourage you to listen to praise and worship. Put down some of your favorite music or this or that. or shut the. Sometimes we would just turn on the TV in our house just for background noise. And whenever we'll do that, I'll come in and my wife's got a movie on. I'm like, what are you watching? She's like, I don't know. I just want something on while I'm folding laundry. Just got background noise. So I encourage you to shut off. Uh, maybe we're done with the Hallmark movies for a while. Yes. And... Uh, <laughs> love you but I do it for you baby and she gets she gets like you're into this one I'm like all right every once in a while there's a good one but uh very rare uh anyways put down some of that other background noise and intentionally purposefully turn on praise and worship 
That's why we made that Spotify list. If you're not into praise and worship, this will get you started. There's a lot of good songs that we're singing in church that, that aren't just for church. It's for you to worship the Lord with and lift him up in your home. So turn those on. Um, Tuesday, personal revival. Let's pray, God, change me from the inside out. I need you to do something in me so you can do something through me. Prepare me for you to do something through me. So that when you do something through me, I don't get caught up, but I can, I can keep my eyes on you as you work through me and not think it's me. I'll know it's you because you do something in me before you do something through me. A personal revival. I don't want to be a Sunday spectacle. I, want to, I don't want to be a one-hit wonder. But do something in us, Lord, that draws other people to you. That people say, I want to be part of what they're doing. That's where we're going to see revival. That's personal revival on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we're going to pray for salvation. Let us win souls in 2021. Proverbs 11, verse 30 says, He that wins souls is wise. How many of you want to be wise? Come on. Soul winning is not just for a, a, an evangelist. It's for all of us. We are all asked and told to do the work of the evangelist. Come on. We want to see the kingdom grow. That the lost would be found. We want to see this house grow. Begin to pray for this house. We can be a little, little, little selfish. Ask God to grow this church, this body of believers. And it's great, you know, if we, you, know you have transplants. And, but I want brand new growth in 2021. Amen. I love recommittals. I love baptizing people again, you know, that they were baptized a long time ago and they just want to relaunch their walk for God, and that is great. But I pulled out of the parking lot this summer after we did some baptismals, and that was great. That was our first ones as being set in lead pastors doing some baptismals, and it's awesome to see what God is doing in people's lives. But I left and I, I told somebody, I said, I'm not satisfied with that. I want to see first-time conversions and people brought into the kingdom, babies afresh and anew, hungry for God, coming in for the first time at the altar in Adavonia Beach at the lake getting baptized for the first time in the name that's above every name. Can we pray? Can will you join with me this week and pray for brand new growth? Come on, for salvations. Will you join with me? Come on, on Wednesday, let's pray for that. On Thursday, let's pray for family salvation. Can somebody say amen? Come on, family salvation. That when those souls come in, that the, the, the rest of the family is soon to follow. That me and my house shall be saved. As for me, we will serve the Lord. Joshua 24, 15. And for those that have been in the house all these years. Come on, in 2021, can we believe? Can we pray? Can we see God that we would see their families come in? That they've been so faithful so long and to, to come to church and to maybe be the only Christian in their family, but we would see God do. Is God able? Come on, I want to ask one more time. Is God able? Come on, with expectation, we are going to seek the face of the Lord for family salvation. Come on, we've all got them. We've all got those ones. Don't give up. Don't stop. Come on, bring it afresh in your minds and your heart to the Lord. Friday, we're going to pray for children. I want you to pray for NB Kids Ministry. Come on, and it would grow and be a place of encouragement, love, teaching, and a foundation for a life built on Jesus. Pray for the leadership. Pray for Megan and the teachers and the helpers that they would have an anointing and a passion to see the kids grow, to see them come in the house. No matter what they look like, no matter even how they're acting, that they would see that they're doing something greater that they may never see the fruit of, but they're going to be faithful and committed to plant those seeds. Will you join with me on Friday and play for, pray for children? Saturday for youth. Pray the teenagers will be drawn to him. And that they would be strong in their generation and stand in their culture for Jesus. Pray for God would, that he would build a youth ministry here at NB Church. That would impact our community and meet the needs of young people in our area. Will you pray for young people with me on Saturday? On Saturday. I want you to begin to prepare your heart to receive people just as they come. Late, I have preached on this for three years, ever since you started saying you, you, I was going to be the next pastor. Started laying it out there. Purple hair, pink hair, ripped jeans, skinny jeans, long hair, no hair. I don't care. Come to Jesus. 
lay your foolish stuff down keep that stuff in your car better yet give that to god i wish they'd do this i can't believe they did that pierced here whatever that's wrong that is not what i see in my bible that's a tradition of man and we ain't gonna have it in this church you are welcome in this place come to jesus come to jesus we're gonna pray for youth will you join with me on saturday praying for youth believing God to build a ministry to young people in this area. Sunday, we're going to pray for marriage and families, that this would be a church where marriages and families are built strong on the rock, Christ Jesus. That we would live in such a way that draws others to him and that young families would come into this church. Let's see families join together and come and build their lives on the rock. Amen? Isn't that good? That's so good. Will you stand with me? Thank you. I know I kept you just a couple minutes longer. But this is what God has asked us to do. This is your challenge should you choose to accept it. I want to ask you and beg you and prod you, do not be a bench warmer for the next three weeks, but get in the game. Get in the fight. Don't just stand by and watch pastor do it or this person. This is for you. Are you up to the challenge? Come on. God is waiting to answer prayers, but you got to pray them. Oh, I want to stand here in 2022 and declare that we had some answered prayers that we started the year off, that God is building all these things that we just asked, that we see his kingdom come, his will be done. The next two weeks, we're going to talk about it some more. This is our game plan. He's waiting to meet you in the fast. Will you seek him? Oh, and I love that the Bible says he does not hide himself very well from us. (laughs) He's not good at hide and seek. If you seek the Lord, he's like, you're going to find me played that game with my kids a long time ago and I, God brought me that verse. As you seek, what, what do we do as parents when our kids seek them? We don't hide that great. We make it so they can find us. We jump out at them a lot of times while they're seeking. Here I am! It's like, you, you don't get this game very well, do you? But that's what God does to us. He just waits for you to begin to seek Him. And He just jumps out and says, you found me. Here I am. This is what I want to do in you and through you. Let's pray. Oh, God, I thank you so much for all you're doing, God, for you are so, so good. God, your word is true, and you are faithful to your word, God. I thank you, God, that your name is above every situation and circumstance, God. And Lord, we lift you up, God, and we declare, God, that you are our source, you're our nourishment, you're our strength, God. Lord, and we fast not for men to see, God, but to be closer to you and to have our heart, Lord, God, just surgically operated on, Lord, that you would make us more like you, God. Lord, move us, God. Give us your compassion, God, to see the world. Give us your compassion to see young people. Lord, give us, Lord, the wisdom to, to be the church in 2020, God. God. I I love you, God. Lord, I ask you to anoint these people, God, for your work, God, for this challenge, God, for this mission, this call, God, to seek you over these 21 days. And we're going to see your kingdom come like never before. We're going to see revival fall like never before. We're going to see your hand, God, your might, God, your power, your spirit come, your boldness come upon your people, God. Not because what we do, God, but because what you do, God, in us and through us, Lord. We love you. We thank you, Jesus. Have your way. And I just want to say, if you're joining us online, you're in this room and you've never fasted before and you've never even accepted Christ as your Lord, it's as simple as ABC, just ask. Ask Him in your heart. Be believe. Believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, that you died and you rose again for my sins. And you confess. See, ask, believe, confess. I confess my sins to you, God. I confess you as Lord of my life. Use me for your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Let me pray for you, church. May the Lord bless you, and may he keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you what nothing else can. Give you his peace that passes all understanding. Come on, everybody said amen. Amen, amen. You've attended service. Now go be the church. I love you guys. Thank you so much. God bless you.